Peace, family. Peace, 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 peace. All right. I hope you guys are having a phenomenal day. If not, do understand and get your day is going to get, get better once your perception gets better. Your day is going to get better once your perception gets better. All right. Listen, I just got out of the shower and the plan was for me to unravel my hair and, um, you know, get dressed. Okay. But source has something else in mind. Okay. For me to drop this video trust okay trust the process all right and one of the things that is magnificent and funny about this is this you know i was like all right well you know let me get dressed first okay let me let me upload some more videos and the idea just kept coming back do the video on trust do the video on trust and so i'm trusting the process okay although many days some days i may show up with my hair a certain type of way and that's okay okay Listen, trust, how to start trusting and knowing that things are working in your favor. So some of you guys may know my story, and if you don't know it, okay, my name is Dina Bryant. I do these inspirational videos so we can shift our energy, our mindset, our paradigm, so we could get different, okay, the things that we truly desire. Not saying that you're not going to be faced with challenges, but one of the things you have to understand is this. When you change the way you see things, things begin to change, okay? Challenges or opportunities, okay? So, a few years ago, I had started doing these videos. It was the pain at that time, the little bit of pain that I was going through, okay, growing through, that my passion, my pain was pushing me well, my passion pulled me, in the words of Michael Beckworth, okay, from Agape, all right? And... I was experiencing um, a little bit of anxiety, you know, just going through it, growing through it. Didn't know, you know, exactly why at that particular time I was going through the things, but things that we tend to go through in life, it is to get our attention. Perhaps the way that we have been conditioned to do things, it does not work, okay? And it's for you to see if you want to keep on going through that and growing through it, or are you ready to get the lessons and pay attention to what source is showing you? Okay. And I was ready to pay attention to it. Okay. And so I started doing things different. I started cutting people off. I started um, focusing on my mental health. Okay. Started meditating. I started getting out of my comfort zone doing these videos. Um, and I started showing up for myself. Showing up, you know, sometimes you may not show up because you're so attached to your body. You are not even your damn body, okay? Okay, you're not even your damn body, honey, but you're so attached to it, all right? So, I'm gonna give you guys a few examples that things have occurred in my life where is though I may have looked at it like, oh my goodness, you know, look what happened. And then everything just worked out perfectly. It all came together. Okay. One prime example was, honey, I had a, a, a fly whip. Okay. This was my first vehicle that was, you know, the, your first vehicle that's, that's a good vehicle. This vehicle, it was so good. Okay. It was a Toyota Camry. Okay. T 2008. Oh, honey, paid cash. Okay, yeah, you know, I may be a big baller. Okay, big baller, shot caller. Okay, pay cash for it. And one of the things, um, it was it was good. Blue. Okay, I'm gonna put a picture up on here. I'm gonna put it now. This is not the car, but it looked it just like this. Honey, the car was so fine. Okay, my first whip that was actually really good. It was so fine that when I looked out the window of my apartment. I was like, who calls this? I swear, I'm not lying. I'm not kidding, okay? Because it looked it that good, okay? It looked it so good. It made me forget that it was my damn car, okay? It looked it good. And I remember I was working, um, doing security, and, and overnight, I, I, I got hired to work the mornings. No, to work in the, the evenings. But then later on, I had agreed to um, work overnight. Okay. That way I could spend time with my children in the daytime. But that, that shift, that, that schedule didn't work for me. But anywho, so I had just got out of work. Okay. And one of the things that occurred was I needed to move my vehicle because it was on one side of the street. The street 
where the sweeper was coming. If you guys don't know about sweepers, okay, that's pretty much, they come in a cleaner street, okay, where your vehicle is parked at. And if you don't move your damn vehicle, you're going to get a ticket, okay? And so I needed to move my vehicle to the next side of the, you know, street. So I had went around a block, okay, and I was backing up so I could take the parking space. And it was one car that, you know, was smart enough that went around me, but it was another car that was speeding and hit my vehicle. Honey, I just had, I just brought this vehicle, okay? I just brought this vehicle cash, okay? And it was a guy um, who owned the taxi company, and he had hit my vehicle. And, like, the back of the vehicle, it was, like, you know, um, a little, like, indented, hanging off, right? A little bit, not not really, really, but it was it you could it was noticeable, and um he hit me, and it's like I felt the the impact from the hit. So after that, the guy he was pretty much like um he got out the car, we got out the car, and I was like he was like you want me to call the cops or you want to call them? So I was like I could call them, so I called them. They came, took the police report, whatever, and um. The cop pretty much was like, oh, in a few days, you could come pick the police report up and, you know, things like that. And we was to call our insurance companies, right? And so later on, me and the guy, well, the guy who had hit me, he had, we exchanged numbers, okay? And we was texting. So he was texting. He was like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to get your car fixed, whatever it was. No, matter of fact, we didn't do the insurance thing because... His idea was for me to go to this, um, it was like this, it's like a road whiz though, like a, a junkyard. And he was like, go over there. And he was like, I'm going to have my guys fix your car. And so I was like, all right, so all of this is being documented. One of the things I'm going to say is make sure that you keep a paper trail, okay? Make sure you keep a paper trail. You may be like, but that, that, that's not going to serve me in the lawn. Yes, it will serve you, honey. Keep a paper trail, okay? One of the jobs that I used to work at, that security job that I told you guys about, they always insisted on keeping a paper trail. You have to keep a paper trail because the paper trail is your evidence. And so what wound up happening was, um, he was like, go there. And you know, I went there. Okay. I went there and I seen like the type of place it was. It was like a junkyard. It was like these big ass 18 wheeler trucks. I was like, you know, I'm leaving. Okay. So I left and, um, he, the guy, he pretty much was like, oh, I'm a fix your car. Don't worry about it. It was my fault. Whatever it was, whatever. Right. And at the time, I'm like, I don't know how, you know, things are going to um, transpire in the midst of, you know, things working, right? I know about the whole insurance thing and, and stuff like that. So what happened was a few days later, right, whenever you are in an accident or anything with um, traffic violations, accidents, you always going to re receive something in the mail from a damn lawyer, okay? It's, it's like, honey, they be looking, okay? Looking, who got into an accident today, right? They be looking. So I received a letter in the mail from this attorney basically saying, like, um, she was informed that I was in an accident and give her a call. She had, you know, take the case and stuff like that. So I gave her a call. Um, I submitted to her the documentations, the police report, um, the text messages and stuff like that from me and a guy, him admitting that it was his fault, right? And so what wound up happening was I had got a $4,000 payout, right, um, for the insurance, okay? I had went to this place to see how much uh, it would cost for my vehicle to get fixed. I went to a place that... <laughs> So I went to a place that is like the most expensive. So they was like, I think like 4000 that it'll cost or something like that. So I went to that place. You know, some things I may have done, okay, okay. But I, I'm a changed person, okay. I went there and they said like 4000 or something. And then later on, I had found out a cheaper place that would fix the vehicle. I think for like 24000 2000 or something. And so... um. 
they had fixed the car for 2000 and something. I think 24, 2400, let's say. Okay. So then after that, I had to start going to the um, chiropractor. So because they seen that it was like a disc, a hernia disc, like in my, my neck and stuff like that. So I went to the chiropractor, whatever it was. Um, and then I had got another payout and a final payout. I think it was like 8,000. Right. So 12,000 altogether. Okay. And I paid for that vehicle. I think it was 4,500. Okay. But that vehicle, it was finer than one, honey. And, and I'm trying to think of what year did I receive? What year did I get the vehicle? 2013, I believe. Honey, because I was, honey, I was boiling, okay? Received $10,000 from Section 8 for completing my goals. That's why I keep telling you guys about goals, okay? Um, and it was three goals, okay? And I only had to do actually two goals. And those goals were to graduate from college, from a community college that I was attending at the time. And then the next goal was to join a financial literacy program that I joined and I completed. And it was only for one day. Right. So then I received the ten thousand dollars. OK, goals. Um, and so, yeah, from there, everything turned out, worked in my favor. OK, same exact thing far as, you know, when before I start making these videos, didn't know exactly why I was going through, growing through. Now I do um, what I was going through. But look, we here now It definitely got me out of my comfort zone. It definitely um, allowed me to share, okay, from inspiration perspective, from an inspiration um, perspective. Um, it allowed me to give back to humanity, right? And and so sometimes you may not know why certain things are taking place, but I guarantee you it's all working for the greater good, okay? The next thing is this, okay? Talking about goals, each and every morning, if you guys have been rocking out to my videos for a minute, I appreciate you, okay? I appreciate you, boo, okay? Um, But each and every morning, I write my goals down, okay? Each and every morning. And one of the things that I do, I trust the process, right? So I have like 15 to 20 shorts, um, you know, short form videos, which is less than a minute, Okay. And I write that down for the goal of the day. And this is practically every darn day, okay? Three long-form videos, okay? And I had got this method from Peach McIntyre, okay? Shout out to Peaches. Um, and also from Brian Tracy, because one of the things in Bob Proctor, one of the things they say is write your goals down. Always write your goals down. Brian Tracy says write your goals down each and every day. And in his book called Psycho Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz, it talks about you don't need to know how it's going to manifest itself. So, for instance, if I write my goals down 15 to 20 shorts per day, also along with three long form videos, okay, I don't know what those videos going to be about. Like, I know they're going to be something along the line, personal development is going to be something along the, the line about growth because. That's mainly all my videos is about. It's about growth, inspiration, entertainment, and education, right? And so from me in, in that field, okay, just how you can get better, right? Shifting your paradigm. So I'm reading the books, right? Psycho-Cybernetics. Another great book that I had spoke about before a few days ago was Trust by Miss Yama Van Zandt, okay? Trust yourself, trust life trust God and trust others. Okay. And this book is, uh, definitely is really, really a great read. Okay. Really, really good. Um, and that's really what trust is. Like you have to trust it, know that things are working out for you. So when I'm writing my goals down, um, I get all these downloads all throughout the day on the content, the downloads, it could come from music. It could come from, um, personal development that I'm listening to. It could come from a book that I'm, I'm reading. It could come from a conversation I may hear. It could come from even a got darn commercial. Okay. Um, the downloads come. And this is one of the things that I really want you to understand and get trust the process, like really trust the process. Like when you get a download to do certain things, do it. Like, 
I know sometimes we may say, well, that may not make sense. It may not make sense, right? But your higher self knows. It knows exactly which way you should go. What's the easiest route, okay? It knows more than your mama, <laughs> more than your daddy, more than your family, more than your coach, more than anyone. It knows. And the reason being is because your higher self is you, okay? But is the part of you, in the words of Bashar, okay, Daryl, who channels Bashar, your higher self is on a mountaintop and it can see further. It can see clearer what's the easiest route for you and what you should be doing, okay? Your purpose, your passion, your gifts, it exactly knows. And so when you listen to it and you do it, okay, you will be very surprised how far you go. See, our brain, it can only, it only has a, 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 a limited capacity of how far it can see, right? So to speak of, you know, it don't know everything. It wasn't created or designed to know, you know, everything, right? But the higher self, it knows everything. Another thing, I'm gonna give you guys another um, story. So a few... I want to say last year, okay, I was listening to um, Bob Proctor, okay, like I listened to him many days on YouTube, and one of the things that had occurred was I was so inspired um, by him and his partner, Sandy Gallagher, and Sandy Gallagher was a securities attorney, okay, and she started working with Bob Proctor. And I remember they had did a, a, a lecture, right? And I was in a car and I, I was like really, really in, expi inspired by this lecture that they gave. And one of the things Sandy Gallagher was talking about, she said like when she first stood on the stage to do the same exact thing that, you know, Bob Proctor um, her, her coach, her, you know, business partner had, was doing, cause that's what she wanted to do. She wanted to, you know, talk about shifting your paradigm and, you know, uh, getting, receiving the things that you truly desire. Right. And so she was saying how scared she was. Right. And, um, to get on stage and talk about, you know, the things that Bob Proctor have taught her, the things that she had learned. Um, she was actually scared. But when it came to securities, like, you know, the thing that she went to school with for, like, she could talk about that, like, you know, with her eyes closed, so to speak. Second, it came second nature. And so she told, she was telling the story about how nervous she was when she was on the stage. And I think she had to be on the stage for about a half an hour to an hour. And she was extremely nervous. And she kept looking back at Bob Proctor and Bob Proctor just like was turning his head like, you know, like you out there, you got to do it, right? You say you want to do what I'm doing, you got to do it. And and she did it. And she said at first she was she was nervous, but afterwards, you know, she loosened up because it was like probably she detached herself from the whole outcome. That's another thing, detachment. You got to detach yourself from the outcome. Like when I was thinking like, all right, universe, let me just take my hair out. Okay. Let me just put on some clothes. Right. And it's like, nope, detach yourself. You know, it's not, it's not about how you show up. It's about the message that, that you give. And that's what you have to understand and get. So anyhow, so Sandy Gallagher, I was so inspired by that. I was like, you know what? I'm going to give a speaking engagement. Never gave a speaking engagement a day in my life at that particular time, okay? In fact, I was a little nervous because I was like, oh my goodness, what if people don't show up? What if this don't, like all these different things, right? The doubt start creeping in. And I had called a good friend while well, I sent a good friend of mine a message like, oh, I'm ready. And I actually met him while I was doing Lyft. I was like, oh, I'm ready, you know, to do the speaking engagement, whatever it is like that. He was like, all right, let's go. So... Okay, I didn't know how to book a whore, okay, because I never booked a whore. I never booked a place where as though, you know, I was actually given something. And I had booked a whore, okay, um, um, Pear Space, I think it's called. And 
from me booking that haul. After that, I had sent out messages to people on my Facebook page, okay, because that's really where I was doing, you know, all my content on Facebook. And I was like, oh, you know, I'm giving a speaking engagement, whatever it is like that, um, is free, whatever. This is the location. No, I said, let me know if you guys are going to come to the loc. If you interested, let me know. And so it was people that was like, oh, they was interested. And here it was, but prior to that, I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I don't even know if people going to show up. And people did show up. It was about six or seven people. Okay. But if I didn't trust the process, okay, I would have never done it. I would have spoke myself out of it. No, you can't do this. This is one of the things that you have to understand is this. You are capable. You are able. You have so much potential within you and you can do it. Okay. You may not know what's the next step. You don't need to know what's the next step. Just put it out. I am going to do this. And I guarantee you it is going to work in your interest. Whether it was a flop, it's still working in your interest because one, you learned something from it. And who's to say that flop is not going to allow you to receive something greater, grander, and bigger? You don't know that. You don't know that. See, we have been programmed to go based upon what we can see, taste, smell, touch. Okay? The five senses. I don't know. I, I can't think of the one. Right? But that's not really where it's at. Where it's at is our perception, our reasoning, our will, our intuition, and our imagination. Higher faculties, five higher faculties that I have got from my mentor, Bob Proctor. Okay? So you have to trust the process. Understand that it's all working out for you. And when your intuition speak, listen to it. Don't second guess it. Don't question it. Listen to it and do exactly what it advised you to do. Because if you say you want things to happen a certain type of way, okay, the only person that really knows exactly how that thing is going to manifest, okay, and how it's going to come about is your intuition. Now, we may be directed to certain things and places and people, but your intuition is going to tell you the direction that you should take. So listen to it, trust it, believe, okay? Know that it's working out for you. And isn't it somewhere in the Bible it say just have faith of a mustard seed? A mustard seed is goddamn little, okay? And that's all the faith you need. Trust. And, and one of the things that you have to understand is this. is two things, right? Trust and fear. We could give our energy to. Neither one of them we can see. We can't see faith and we can't, we can't see fear. Okay. But you get to choose which one you are going to give your energy to. And that's the beautiful thing about life. We have choices. And with that being said, I hope you start trusting your intuition today to get the results that you say you desire. I hope you start trusting and believing that life is actually working for you. Remember, in the words of James Allen, if you say you can, you can. If you say you can't, you can't. Neither way is right or wrong. It's just all what you say. But what do you prefer? I prefer it's working, honey. It's working in my favor. Things coming together so magnificent. It's, it's coming together like a harmony. You know, like a good harmony. It's, it's just coming together. Okay? All right? And with that being said, i catch you guys on the next one. Make sure you're rocking out, believing in yourself. Understand we are going, growing, and of course, glowing. Okay? Honey, the, the face would be glowing. Okay? Maybe a little ashy right now, but that's okay. All right? Till next time. Peace.